Hello and welcome to Aston Originals. Today we're talking about Manuka honey and its potential use in clinical treatments. I'm joined by Dr Jonathan Cox, whose team have been working in the lab to develop these potential treatments. Now, firstly, Jonathan, can you introduce yourself and tell us what you do at Aston? Yes, I'm Dr Jonathan Cox. I'm a senior lecturer in microbiology and uh, I lead the microbacterial research group at Aston University. Great. Well, firstly, can you tell us about your latest lab research? It sounds really exciting. Yes, I think it really is. Um, we've been looking to see if there are ways in which we can reduce the amount of antibiotics that are needed to treat a very aggressive bacterial infection that we work on, which is called Mycobacterium abscessus. Mycobacterium abscessus tends to infect people that have underlying lung conditions like cystic fibrosis or bronchiectasis. And it's a really difficult organism to treat. The antibiotics that are used to treat it are really aggressive and often have really nasty side effects. One of those antibiotics is called amicacin. And the treatment with amicacin often leaves people with long-term hearing loss. So you can imagine that that has a significant consequence on people's quality of life after treatment if they, if they recover from their infection. So amicacin is one of those drugs we really want to reduce the amount that we need to use. So what we've been doing is looking to find agents that we could partner with amicacin to reduce the amount that we need to use. And one of the things that we've found that's really effective uh, at doing that is manuka honey. So this all kind of stems from a, an undergraduate project that I was running here, at, um, a final year project I was running here at Aston, uh, where I asked students to go and look in the cupboards at home and bring in things that they think could potentially kill bacteria. And we screened them against a large number of bacteria and we found that the leukemia was effective against mycobacterium abscessus. That's really interesting. So, I mean, why manuka honey? Um, what kind of, um, I suppose, medicinal um, effects can it have? And, and can you just tell us how you've combined it with this antibiotic to, to treat such an infection? Sure. So we've known that manuka honey has medicinal properties for millennia. Okay, mm -hmm. It's been used for a, a, a very long time as a means of medicine. Um, but no one's really understood why uh, and, you know, and what exactly it can be used for until more recently. So we've established that manuka honey is a very effective antimicrobial, it's a very effective antibiotic, it's really good at killing bacteria. And it does this in a, in a, because it's got a combination of different compounds within the honey that all work in different ways, but they work together to actually kill the bacteria. They don't just stop the bacteria from growing, they actually kill the bacteria. We call that bactericidal. So what we did was we looked to see how that honey would what we call synergize, how it would work with amicacin to see whether or not you can actually reduce the amount of amicacin you need to use. And that's what we did. And what we found is that we can reduce the amount of amicacin that we would need to kill mycobacterium abscessus by eightfold. Mm. So from, to put numbers on it, from 16 microgram per mil to two microgram per mil, which is a significant reduction in the amount of drug that patients would need to take. And so as a consequence, we hope that that will reduce the side effects that the patients suffer with. So um, that's really interesting. Talk us through the science a bit more. I think um, there was a nebulization treatment that you, you used in the lab. Can you just sort of take us through what you did in the lab to, to test course, this? Yeah. So obviously this is a respiratory infection. This is an infection of the lungs. So in order to be able to test this in a, in a laboratory environment, we obviously can't go around nicking lungs from people to, to, to see how our, our drugs work. So we created an artificial lung for this study. And we did this very sort of high tech using uh, basic, an autoclave bag, which is basically a very heavy duty bin bag that we use in the lab, um, which we thermo sealed around a nebulizer, which is a, you know, the, the, the thing that administers antibiotics topically to the lungs um, you know, that's used in clinical practice. So we, we created this nebulizer setup with this um, autoclave bag. And inside the bag, we had a series of plates, petri dishes, that had a suspension of bacteria on them. And we could spray 
antibiotic on its own at a known concentration, or antibiotic with Manuka honey into the artificial lung and look to see how it reduced the growth of bacteria. And what we found that was that just nebulizing amikacin on its own was not very effective. And that's how patients are treated with nebulized amikacin, it's not very effective. But with just a very small concentration of Manuka honey added, we could kill the bacteria that would have been that, that would grow inside that lung environment. So this represents a significant step forward in, in, in reducing the amount of antibiotics that, um, that these patients may need to take and hopefully reducing the side effects, meaning the less patients suffer with long-term hearing loss following abscessus treatment. I mean, obviously, um, this is a brilliant finding. It's very early stage um, mm -hmm. and it, it's at present, it was a lab-based experiment. So, um, you know, this this development has great potential. But how how could it benefit people in the future? You know, talk me through. Um, I suppose the people um, who suffer most with these sorts of infections and how it could benefit them. And then, obviously, we'll go on to the next steps after that. But yeah, again, I'm just keen to know why it's such an, an exciting development. So the, the way in which abscessus is treated is with 13 months of antibiotics. This yeah. is the sort of the basic treatment. 13 months of injected intravenous antibiotics along with this nebulized amicacin treatment. And the amicacin is one of the really nasty antibiotics that have to be given. But without the full collection of antibiotics, the, the chances of treatment success are minimal. So amicacin has to be given. Often this infection occurs in young people that have cystic fibrosis. So this can be in children, for example. So if you imagine hearing loss at such an early age, the life affecting consequences of that treatment are significant. My sort of scientific ambition in life is to try and make the treatment of mycobacterium abscessus better for everybody that needs to undergo that treatment, okay? And I think that by reducing the amount of antibiotic we need to be giving these patients, but making sure that it still has, you know, it's still effective and still has um, a, 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 the opportunity to, to cure them of their infection, um, I think that's really important. If we can give less antibiotic but still have the same effect, that's critical. And the nice thing about this Manuka honey. Um, and a case in combination, it, I'm a big believer in combination therapy because mm. the more sort of synergistic antibiotics you use, the less chance you're going to develop resistance, antibiotic okay. resistance. And of course, antibiotic resistance is a major problem because once your infection is resistant to antibiotics, you, you can't go and use those drugs again. And just on that, I mean, do you know why at this point the Manuka honey works so well with the amicacin, why you could reduce the dosage, or is that some, something that you, you would still need to explore more? So we know why Manuka honey is antibacterial. There are multiple components within the Manuka honey that are antibacterial. So one is called methyl galoxol, and that's a long word, and everyone probably hasn't heard of methyl galoxol. But when you go to your local high street Manuka honey supplier and you're looking at all the range of Manuka honeys, you'll see that they have an MGO rating. And that MGO stands for methyl galoxol, and it has a number. That is the amount of methyl galoxol that's present in the honey. And we know methyl galoxol is antimicrobial. Okay. So the higher methyl galoxol content, the higher the antimicrobial activity that you can see. Most of the work we did in, in this paper actually focuses on the middle of the range methyl galoxyl concentration because I want to demonstrate how clearly, you know, how applicable this is. You don't need the sort of some specialist manuka honey. This is off the shelf manuka honey that we've used in this study. Yeah, that's brilliant. And I mean, what needs to happen next for this to progress to the next stage? And what, you know, what plans do you have? So this has all been done, what we call in vitro. So it's just mm -hmm. been done in the lab, not in any sort of um, physiological system. Okay, we've just looked at this in the laboratory at the bench. It's a really exciting 
step forward, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of preclinical evaluation that needs to take place before we could move this into the clinic. We need to see whether or not this, this combination would work and would be effective in other models before we can we can uh, we can uh, truly discern whether or not this would be effective in in humans. But so far, so good. Okay, and I'm assuming you'd be looking for um, to, to to move this on with the right funding and and the right Absolutely. support. We can't carry on without funding. Yeah. So I have a, a if anybody listening wants to support our work, and I think our work is extremely important, and you know, we are making a real difference to people's lives with the research that we're doing. Um, we have a, uh, a GoFundMe page that uh, the link will be at the bottom of this interview. Lovely, thanks Jonathan. Well, it was great talking to you, really interesting stuff. Um, remember you can follow us uh, on Aston Originals on YouTube and on Twitter, which is at Aston Originals.